Welcome to Walking with the Word, the Bible in 365. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you would give us your words. Help us to walk in the reality, in the promise of your words today. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today, we are continuing in 2 Chronicles 10, 11, and 12 in Psalm 53. 2 Chronicles 10, Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard this, he was in Egypt, where he had fled from King Solomon. He returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam, and he and all Israel went to Rehoboam and said to him, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten this harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. Rehoboam answered, Come back to me in three days. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer? these people he asked they replied if you will be kind to these people and please them and give them a favorable answer they will always be your servants but Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him he asked them what is your advice how should we answer these people who say to me lighten the yoke your father put on us the young men who had grown up with him replied the people have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid on you a heavy yoke. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam. As the king had said, come back to me in three days. The king answered them harshly, rejecting the advice of the elders. He followed the advice of the young men and said, My father made your yoke heavy, I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips, I will scourge you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for this turn of events was from God, to fulfill the word the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, through Ahijah the Shilonite. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? To your tents, Israel, look after your own house, David. So all the Israelites went home. But as for the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam still ruled over them. King Rehoboam sent out Adoniram, who was in charge of the forced labor, but the Israelites stoned him to death. King Rehoboam, however, managed to get into his chariot and escape to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. Chapter 11. When Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he mustered Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 able young men, to go to war against Israel and to regain the kingdom for Rehoboam. But the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and to Benjamin. This is what the Lord says. Do not go up to fight against your fellow Israelites. Go home, every one of you, for this is my doing. So they obeyed the words of the Lord and turned back from marching against Jeroboam. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem and built up towns for defense in Judah. Bethlehem, Edom, Tekoa, Beth, Zer, Zoko, Adullam, Gath, Merishah, Ziph, Adorium, Lachish, Ezekah, Zorah, Ajalon, and Hebron. These were the fortified cities in Judah and Benjamin. He strengthened their defenses and put commanders in them with supplies of food, olive oil, and wine. He put shields and spears in all the cities and made them very strong. So Judah and Benjamin were his. The priests and the Levites from all the districts throughout Israel sided with him. The Levites even abandoned their pasture lands and property and came to Judah in Jerusalem because Jeroboam and his sons had rejected them as priests of the Lord. When he appointed his own priest for the high places and for the goat and calf idols he made, those from every tribe of Israel who set their hearts on seeking the Lord, the God of Israel, followed the Levites to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices to the Lord, the God God of their ancestors. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah and supported Rehoboam, son of Solomon, three years, following the ways of David and
and Solomon during this time. Rehoboam married Mahalath, who was the daughter of David's son, Jeremoth, and of Abihail, daughter of Jesse's son, Eliab. She bore him sons, Jewish, Shemariah, and Zaham. Then he married Makkah, the daughter of Absalom, who bore him Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shelemith. Rehoboam loved Makkah, daughter of Absalom, more than any of his other wives and concubines. In all, he had 18 wives and 60 concubines, 28 sons and 60 daughters. Rehoboam appointed Abijah, son of Makkah, as crown prince among his brothers in order to make him king. He acted wisely, dispersing some of his sons throughout the districts of Judah and and Benjamin, and to all the fortified cities. He gave them abundant provisions and took many wives for them. Chapter 12. After Rehoboam's position as king was established and he became strong, he and all Israel with him abandoned the law of the Lord. Because they had been unfaithful to the Lord, Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem in the fifth year of the reign of Rehoboam with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen and the innumerable troops of the Libyans, Sukkites, and Cushites that came with him from Egypt. He captured the fortified city of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. Then the prophet Shemaiah came to Rehoboam and to the leaders of Judah who had assembled in Jerusalem for fear of Shishak. And he said to them, this is what the Lord says. You have abandoned me. Therefore, I now abandon you to Shishak. The leaders of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, the Lord is just. When the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah. Since they have humbled themselves, I will not destroy them, but will soon give them deliverance. My wrath will not be poured out on Jerusalem through Shishak. They will, however, become subject to him so that they may learn the difference between serving me and serving the kings of other lands. When Shishak, king of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem, he carried off the treasuries of the temple of the Lord and the treasuries of the royal palace. He took everything, including the gold shields Solomon had made. So King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them and assigned these to the commanders of the guard on duty at the entrance of the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the Lord's temple, the guards went with him, bearing the shields, and afterwards they returned them to the guard room. Because Rehoboam humbled himself, the Lord's anger turned from him, and he was not totally destroyed. Indeed, there was some good in Judah. King Rehoboam established himself firmly in Jerusalem and continued as king. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, this city the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, in which to put his name. His mother's name was Nama. She was an Ammonite. He did evil because he did not set his heart on seeking the Lord. As for the events of Rehoboam's reign from beginning to end, are they not written in the records of Shemaiah the prophet and of Edo the seer that deal with the genealogies? There was continual warfare between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam rested with his ancestors, and he was buried in the city of David, and Abijah, his son, succeeded him as king. Psalm 53, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there is any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on God, but they are overwhelmed with dread, where there was nothing to dread. God scattered the bones of those who attacked you and put them to shame, for God despised them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores his people, but let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad.